Welcome back, everybody, to our discussion of the different classes of medication. This lesson focuses on common types of psychotropic medications, their use and administration, and precautions specific to this class of medication. Understanding the differences between psychotropic medications is important because the correct medication may relieve symptoms of a mental disorder, while the incorrect medication may aggravate existing symptoms or lead to worsening symptoms. A psychotropic medication can be defined as any drug that affects behavior, mood, thoughts, or perception. Psychotropics influence the levels of different neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers in the brain, such as serotonin, dopamine, glutamate, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA. There are five main classes of psychotropic drugs, antidepressants, anti-anxiety, stimulants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. Each class treats symptoms by regulating the levels of the neurotransmitters associated with a specific mental disorder, such as depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This lesson focuses on antidepressants, anxiolytics, and stimulants. Antidepressants are used to treat depression, and sometimes anxiety disorders, pain disorders, and insomnia. Depression is a serious mood disorder that affects the whole body, including moods and thoughts. It is caused by an imbalance of neurotransmitters with other factors playing a role. The most common symptoms include lasting sadness, anxiety, loss of interest, appetite and weight changes, decreased energy, trouble concentrating, and feelings of worthlessness. Antidepressants alter the levels of serotonin, norepinephrine, and or dopamine. Many types of antidepressants are available to treat depression, including selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, fluoxetine, or Prozac, paroxetine, or Paxil, sertraline, or Zoloft, citalopram, or Celexa, and escitalopram, or Lexapro. Serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs, include duloxetine, or Cymbalta, venlafaxine, or Effexor XR, and desvenlafaxine, or Pristique. Side effects of SSRIs and SNRIs include feeling agitated, anxious, or shaky, loss of appetite, insomnia, headaches, loss of libido. Tricyclic antidepressants, nortriptyline, or Pamelor, amitriptyline, doxepin, and dizepramine, or norpramine. Side effects include dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, problems passing urine, weight gain, and more. Side effects should improve within a few weeks. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOI, are another category of antidepressants that are used only when other antidepressants don't work due to the side effects, dietary restrictions, and safety concerns. Wellbutrin and Zyban, which are norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitors, or NDRIs, are other antidepressants that may be used to treat depression. With all antidepressants, patients should be taught that they may start feeling better in a couple of weeks but it can take up to four to six weeks for the drug to be fully effective. Avoid alcohol and recreational drugs. Take medication consistently at the same time of day and at a specific time. Don't stop medication abruptly if experiencing side effects, if symptoms subside, or the medicine isn't working well. Talk with your provider and explore all your options. Monitor closely the patient's response to the medication and report thoughts of suicide immediately. For many, Psychotherapy combined with medication works best by helping the patient identify concerns or issues affecting the patient's well-being. Anti-anxiety medications, also called minor tranquilizers and anxiolytics, are used to treat anxiety disorders, such as obsessive-compulsive disorder, or OCD, post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, long-term chronic pain, panic disorder, alcohol withdrawal symptoms, and insomnia. Anxiety disorders are a group of mental disorders characterized by excessive feelings of dread, anxiety, and fear that impair a person's ability to function socially, occupationally, and personally. Anti-anxiety medications work by increasing the concentrations of neurotransmitters like serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, and or dopamine. Common examples of anti-anxiety medications include alprazolam, or Xanax, diazepam, or Valium, and lorazepam, or Ativan, which are benzodiazepines, or sedatives. Benzodiazepines are controlled substances because they can be habit-forming and misused. 
healthcare providers should administer cautiously. The most common side effects of benzodiazepines drowsiness, lightheadedness, confusion, unsteadiness, especially in older people who may fall and injure themselves. Treatment for anxiety disorders that are not controlled substances include the SSRIs and SNRIs. Other non controlled medications include the following buspirone, hydroxazine, which is an antihistamine, propranolol, a beta blocker, and pregabalin. It is important to note that sedatives are prescribed in order to calm anxiety and reduce nervous system overactivity without putting the patient to sleep, like Valium. Hypnotics are prescribed to facilitate sleep, like Ambien. Stimulants are used to treat attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, and some sleep disorders, like narcolepsy. ADHD is characterized by an ongoing pattern of behavior that includes inattention and or hyperactivity impulsivity that affects and interferes with functioning and development. Stimulants work by enhancing the effects of neurotransmitters, such as dopamine and norepinephrine, in the brain. Common examples of stimulants include dextroamphetamine and amphetamine combination, marketed as Adderall, and methylphenidate, marketed as Ritalin, and Concerta. It is important to note that some psychotropics may be abused by patients, most commonly benzodiazepines for their sedative effects and stimulants for their energizing effects. It is important that you monitor patient behavior for indications of abuse, such as requesting refills ahead of schedule. Although psychotropic medications are extremely beneficial in the treatment of various mental disorders, there are some side effects that appear across many of the psychotropic medication classes, such as changes in weight, sexual dysfunction, sleep disturbances, and cognitive changes such as memory or concentration difficulties. A serious side effect is sudden changes in mood or thoughts of suicide. This is called activation syndrome and is characterized by an increase in anxiety, agitation, irritability, mania, and hostility either early in the use of psychotropic medications or when there is a dosage change. It is very important that you closely monitor patients during these time frames for any changes in behavior. Now, let's look at the administration of psychotropics. As with all medication administration, you should perform proper hand hygiene and don appropriate PPE before administering any psychotropic medications. You also want to be sure to follow the rights of medication administration, ensuring the right patient, drug, dose, route, time, and documentation, with added precautions, to avoid contaminating medication packages. Be sure to be observant of the patient's mood and behavior and document any changes. In summary, psychotropic medications are any drug that affects behavior, mood, thoughts, or perceptions. They are broken into five classes. Antidepressants, anti-anxiety, stimulants, antipsychotics, and mood stabilizers. Each class treats symptoms of mental disorders by influencing the levels of different neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, and gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA. There are many common side effects of psychotropics, including changes in weight and sleep disturbances. The most concerning side effect is activation syndrome, a condition in which patients experience sudden changes in mood and or thoughts of suicide.